Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to go about making your own C4 explosions similar to the recent sort of trailer demo thing I've made. So that's going to have all the cool graphical features of an explosion. So we'll have the, um, the smoke and the rubble, possibly the shockwave as well. So yeah, that's going to be um, today's tutorial. Hopefully next tutorial we'll get into the mechanics of um, the C4 itself and getting it to stick to surfaces and stuff. So first go file new, make yourself a new file, save it as um, C4 or just even explosion, then click save. Um, Go to Blender Game, GeoSL, um, change the frame rate to 60. If stuff looks slightly different, that's because we're in 2.69, which just came out recently, so go ahead and get that if you don't have it already. Lots of cool new stuff, as in better buttons. I don't think much has changed on the uh, Blender Game Engine side, not just yet. So we're going to press X, Delete, Shift A, Add a Plane, S, and then, so just press S, and then Go ahead, give it a material, call it smoke, then no specularity, no back facing, and transparency on. Go ahead to the description of the video and there will be a texture for you guys to download. Um, select alpha down here, UV, and open up that texture. That's just the um, good old smoke texture I made a while ago. So, download that. Then you can press tab, view, unwrap, and then go to texture view, and that should look quite nice. Now what we have to do is press tab, and then I think it was RY90, I think so. Then we're going to go to game logic, add an always sensor, and a edit object, join the two up, and then add a track 2 camera 3D and I think we put that on true I'm not sure, we'll just leave it for now um, and we'll compress 0 and press P I can't see it so yeah, I've done something wrong compress RY90 again and then RX90 I think it was this one yeah, there we go so RX90 and that should be working quite nicely. So after that we're going to animate it nicely. So go into the materials tab, um, drag this to full and make this a little bit bigger for us. Um, select object color, go to the settings and make a timeline down the bottom here. And go to frame zero and um, we'll go in here, set that to nearly nothing, so maybe 0.2, and right click, insert keyframe, then go to frame 5, set it to full, so it fades in really fast, so just like that, and then go change this to 400, and then go to frame 360, so all the way over here. 360, then change that all the way to nothing and click insert keyframe. So basically we have a piece of smoke that fades in fast and lasts for 6 seconds. First of all we're going to go back to frame 0 though and press S to make it a bit smaller, then I insert scaling, then go to frame 60, then press S, make it maybe that big, maybe a bit smaller mate, you don't want the sort of animation to be too big. Then click scaling and it should work fine. So now we have a scaling piece of smoke and that slowly fades out. So that's working quite nicely. Um, we're going to add a property here, actually two, one of them is going to be motion. I'll just drag that open, oh, mode spell motion and that's going to be boolean and then this one's going to be timer and it's going to be integer and it's going to be 60 
Um, then we're going to go to add a motion um, and a property. So when motion is equal to true, um, with a frequency of yeah, just zero. Then it's going to it's going to move. So for the smoke to slowly drift upwards, we want it to move upwards on the z axis, um, which is the same. And that's just going to be 0.01. And yep, yeah, that should work fine. So next, we're going to minimize that, add another property, and then always add timer minus one. So as soon as this is spawned into the scene, it will start adding the timer minus one, which means that this will have to be true. Um, and then when the property timer is equal to zero, then it's going to assign the property motion to true. And then as we just did before, when the motion is true, then it moves. So we'll press P and try that out. We'll go back to frame zero. We also need to add an action though. So add an action, join that up to this one. Select smoke action, end frame 360. Um, yeah, that should be fine. Then press P and fades away quite nicely. However, that does scale sort of scarily fast, so might want to make that a bit smaller. Then I enter scaling, and press P. And that could work, but I might actually want to keep the smoke sort of scaling as it moves upwards. So I'm going to go to the graph editor. I'm going to make this smaller. Go to frame 60, press A to deselect, control K to select that one keyframe, and then GX um, 300. So we're on the end part, 360. Now, if you press play, it sort of fades in, and then starts scaling really slowly. So we're going to go ahead to 360 and um, make it a lot bigger. You press I instead of scaling, and because it has a lot more space, it will look a lot better. So now we'll press P. And that works quite nicely. So that looks fine. We'll press stop on that. Yep, that should be... I don't think I've forgotten anything. So that's that part done. We can press M and move it to another layer quite far away. Then we're going to press Shift S. Cursor to the center, shift A, at a cube, call it smoke trail, change the physics to no collision and invisible, um, and an always sensor, add a edit object, and add a motion. So join those both up, um, like so. Then we're going to add edit object. We're going to add object smoke for 360. Oh, 360. Um, then we're going to also add a motion. Or oh, set this to true and something like uh, I think even five was good. Um, and then a motion of maybe I think 0.8. I did last time. So now we'll press P and spawn smoke. Let's go into camera view, press P and that's what the smoke's going to look like. So we'll have our explosion and then the smoke will slowly rise up. There is a bit too much delay for my liking though, so I'm going to turn that down a couple notches. And that's getting a bit better. One more and I like the look of that. So, um, yeah, if you do turn it down too far, it sort of, you can see the repeating texture, so I don't know, maybe three is good. I just don't want it to look too blotchy. Yeah, I think two is a good value. So, after we've done that, 
got a nice spawning um, smoke trail. We can go ahead into layer, or we can press M and move it to this layer, so the one beside the smoke itself. Um, make sure you don't put um, objects spawning other objects on the same layer. Um, because that just really mucks up stuff and it doesn't work. So keep everything nice and separate, especially if they're spawning. Um, another object, then we can go back to layer 1 and press Shift A, add a cube, and this can be um, smoke spawner. Um, we're going to add an OS sensor and a Edit object, oh, that's going to join up with that. Then we're going to add smoke spawner, oh, no, smoke trail, sorry. Maybe we need quite a short time, so maybe even 10. We'll probably have to turn that down though. So we'll press P, and we've, yeah, I think that's a good size explosion, so it goes to around about here. It's a nice radius. Go to, yeah. The physics settings, no collision, invisible, and shift D, R, Z, um, just spin it around, then R, Y, then shift D, R, Z, again, R, X, R, Y, I oh know, then shift D, R, Z, and R, X, and now when we press P, we have it going in all directions. There could be one problem with that though, is it goes a little bit too fast, so like I said before, um, this might still be too high. Yeah, that might probably be a better value. The annoying thing with this is you're going to have to end up doing it to all of them, so instead of doing that, we probably going to have to muck around with this one instead. So I'll press 0, press P, and that, that's a better length. So now we have to do it again, press shift D, R, Z, R, Y, shift D, R, Z, R, X, R, Z, R, Y, shift D, R, Z. Um, you can also do some facing downwards because if the explosion, yeah, if you put it on a wall or something, you want it to go in all directions, not just upwards. So just, um, yeah, spin them all over the place, random directions, until you have a good cluster like that. Then they'll all make a big poof in the middle, and they'll look good. But we need to set this to no collision first, because, um, yeah, collision stuff sort of gets in the way sometimes. And that looks quite nice. So... Yep, that can work. Now, I'm going to, I think it was the local, went on the Y axis. So I'm going to put Shift D and then R Y and then move it upwards. Yep, I did. So um, we're going to have, as a normal explosion, it has a part coming out the top. So I'm going to have one facing up, then Shift D, R Z, and add one more. I'm going to press P, and you can't really see much, but yeah, no, that looks sort of good. Um, you can still add more if you want, I don't know, maybe there isn't enough, sort of, um, trails in there already, but yeah, just muck around with that until you got something you're happy with. Um, if you really wanted to, I mean, you could change the time on some of them. Um, to get, like, varying lengths. But, yeah, I think... Oh, there's that one. Turn that up a bit. There we go. I think it does look a little bit silly if they are too big, though, so... Yeah. Somehow that's good. So, um... I'm going to add a couple more, and I think that should be enough for me. Definitely enough, you don't want to have too many, because then you become subject to lag. 
which isn't a very nice person. So yeah, we have a nice sort of exploding out thing. Um, now what we want to do is muck around with lighting. So go to this layer with the smoke spawner, shift A, add a lamp, so a point, move it outside, um, and give it an energy of 5, nice yellow colour, orangey yellow, like that. Um, and then move that there, then shift D, G, Y, and this time we're going to make it a little bit more yellowish. Um, move it all around the place, shift D, G, Z, and one down here. You don't want to have too many because that will lag your, um, yeah, lag your game, make you, I don't know, depending on what GPU you have, it's probably screw around with that. Um, so three is usually good. Then hold down shift and click on here or on the smoke trail and control P and parent object. Then, um, yeah, that will move with that. So if we go back to layer one, press zero and P, then we'll have, we have a sort of flash as each one goes. Which is cool, it might be a bit too orange for me though, so I'm going to move these. Actually yeah, if you move them further away you get, get a lot more light, so definitely do that. Um, yep, that's working quite nicely. Yeah, it did sort of give off a really orangey glow, so I'm going to make it a little bit more yellow, a little bit more fiery. Um, but yeah, I'll just colour this bottom one here, and that should be good. So now if we press P, we can go back to zero. Yeah, that looks, that looks okay. We can sort of get that nice. Um, yellow blast, that should be good. What we're going to do though is do the same for, well it doesn't, it doesn't really seem that bright does it? I know, muck around with this lighting until you got something good. What we need to do though is um, get this, um, hold down B, box select, select a middle one. So I may as well, yeah, click smoke spawner here. Um, and then control P and parent to object. So now if we select smoke spawner and then move it around, everything rotates around it. So yeah, that worked fine. Now we need to select it and press M, move it to layer three this time uh, with everything selected. Move it to layer three, then get the lights from here, which are the same colour, then press shift D and click, then move those to that layer. So now we have the same lights. You can manually add in your know, other lights if you want, but just a quick shortcut. Um, then we're going to select all those, then click on the smoke spawner and press control P, and to object. Go back on the first layer, press shift S, go to the center, shift A, and we're going to add a empty. And this empty will, um, so when we press A, it will spawn the explosion. So it will edit object, uh, smoke spawner 1. And we'll join that up, and do just for 20. Well, that, that doesn't even need to be that long. We can, we can turn that time down quite quite a bit. So now we're going to press P and press A. We have an explosion, which is fairly similar, but that's okay. So it explodes out and it fades away, which looks very nice. Oh, and if you notice that, the smoke reappeared, which means we have an error. So we go back to the smoke trail. I think this happened last time. You have to turn it down to 300. Go back to this layer, press A, 
get our explosion and we have to watch it. Okay, and that worked well, so now that's all faded away. There we go. We have the main body of the explosion. If we go to this layer, and press P, and there we go. There's our main body with a sort of flash of light. This looks quite cool, but we don't have an actual explosion like in the demo. So what we need to do is go to this layer, um, press 1, and then press P, and take note of the shape. Um, so that's sort of like a star. So after you've got sort of, just keep replaying that till you have a sort of shape in your head of what that looks like. So just I know those top parts. Then we're gonna go, go into GIMP. First go on the slayer, press escape, and go onto GIMP, and new 750 by 750. Uh, color to alpha, just quick to start up, um, and then I'm going to play this one more time, so it's sort of a star texture, so we're going to do it, so get a lightest yellow, and then go, I don't know, add a star, it's oh, like paintbrush, add a star like explosion like that. It doesn't have to be exact, it's just something basic. Um, because, yeah, this is just going to be popping up for a millisecond. That should be that should be fine. Now we're gonna add a orange color. Then we can zoom in. Go back to paint and paint an orange color around it. Then we're going to get a in between color. So more saturated yellow, and then we're going to go around this outside. So after you've done that, we can go select smudge tool. If you want to, you can make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to smudge this out. That's looking quite nice. If you're happy with that, that, that's cool. I know you might want to smudge this in a bit more. Um, what I did for my original one is I went to Filters, Blur, and Gordon Blur. Um, yeah, if you go into this little preview window and change that to, I know, maybe 20, um, that will blur it a lot nicer. That's what I think I did for the original one. So if you press OK, I don't know it might it gives a, a bit more sort of a blazed, foggy look. You don't have to do that. Leave it if you like. Um, I'm gonna go ahead export call it explosion. If you have a folder for your game or whatever, save it in there. But I would, I'm just doing a tutorial, so I'm gonna save it in documents. Export that out and. We can close that. <clears throat> now back to Blender. Go to the layer with the smoke. Shift this cursor to center and then shift A, add a plane. Make it really big and 
call it explosion. Then add an always oh and add object and it's gonna be facing the camera 3D as well. So that should work fine. Um, no collision to stop problems. And then we're going to go give it a material. I oh, know you can call the materials names if you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave it. Um, no specularity, no bit facing, transparency on, no alpha, and give it a texture. Oh, um, UV. Select the alpha channel, open up your image, so that was in here, and there we go, explosion. I'm going to open that up, and we're going to also select shadeless, only for the explosion though. I'm also going to set the alpha to 2 to bring out those nice RNG bits on the side, then press tab U unwrap. Go into UV over here, then press tab, and go to explosion. Press S and G Y G X and then S X maybe. Just want to fit all of that in. And yeah, that should work. That should work nicely. We're gonna press do one more thing. Tab R X ninety, just like with the smoke. Press Tab again, and that will ensure it's always facing the camera. Then we're gonna go to this layer. Select Smoke Spawner. And it is going to, instead of smoke trail, it's, well not instead of, um, it's on top of that, it's going to, we're going to add another edit object, and we're going to select explosion. Put that to like 3 or something, we hardly see that anyway. Um, but if you press P, there you go, you have, you have a nice sort of, well, if we press zero, there we go. It is a bit big, so I'm going to go to this layer and then press tab and S. And then press tab again. Go to this layer, press B. And, oh no. Maybe a bit smaller. Turn down the alpha a little bit. Press P and there we go. Oh no, there seems to be a bit of delay. If you really want to do, you could go and um, go to frame zero, make it small. I enter the scaling. Go to frame three, make it big, and then I enter the scaling and add an action and join that up as well. Explosion action and frame three. Now, if we go over well, here, press P and A. Oh, wait for the smoke to fade away. Yep, that, that could work quite nicely. Um, one thing I don't think is quite so good is the smoke size. So I'm going to go to frame zero, press S, um, and press my insert scaling, and go to 360, make that a bit bigger. Um, Yep, just makes the smoke sort of fit in with the explosion a bit better. Makes it a lot thicker as well, which always looks good. I'm happy with that. So yeah, there we go. Now all we have to do is add rubble. We'll go back onto layer 1, press Shift A, and we'll add a cube. Um, then we can go ahead in the settings, call it rubble, and give it a nice texture. So, depending on the environment you're planning on using it, um, you will have to sort of give it a different texture. So, um, image or movie, UV, and um, I, I was just using it in a concrete environment, so a concrete texture is fine. So just something like that. If you were using it in a outdoor environment, you might want to, I don't know, Maybe grass, maybe a blend of grass and dirt or, so, or something like that. So I'm going to select concrete and open it up. Then I'm going to go.
go in the window here, tab U and Q projection. Then I'm going to press Shift A and we're going to add a sphere. And then hold down Shift and click the cube and press Control P and parent. Then select the cube here and press T to open up the toolbar and click cell fracture and this big menu will pop up um, you want to choose child vertices, own vertices um, turn up the source limit to maybe something like that it doesn't usually always reach that um, that sometimes deselects if you brush over it which is annoying um, so make sure both of those are on then turn up the noise and one random turn up the random here and turn the margin off actually it doesn't really matter but yeah we'll just do it then click OK and it will chop it all up for you now if we go on the second layer here beside it it has all our rubble pieces so then we can press M and move them to layer 1 we can delete the original cube and the the sphere. So we have seven pieces, which is actually a very, very nice number. You you want around, you want up to ten different pieces, but more than that, and it just sort of gets quite messy. I'm going to go into this layer, and well, first of all, hold press B, box select, and just drag over all of those, and then press M and move it to layer five. So, not this layer, but this layer. The same as the smoke spawner. Then we're going to change that to global. Go on this view. And then select a random smoke spawner. Then add an edit object. And we're going to choose, just type in rubble. And select the first one. Give it a time of 360, so 6 seconds of being alive. Then you can press H, select another one, edit object, type in rubble, oh. select the second one, and just 360, then press H. Um, we'll leave that one out, but we'll spawn one on here. Rubble 360 and so pretty much what you want to do is select one that you want the rubble to sort of shoot out of So give them all a lifetime, it can be longer or shorter, whatever you want, um, minimize those, and now we should have some rubble spawning. If we press Alt H, and then press P, there we go, there's our rubble. But it is, unfortunately, quite slow, and it doesn't shoot outwards. So we'll hide all these, oh, nope, no, nope. we wanted that part, that big chunk. Um, I'm going to press S and make it smaller because it's a bit too big for me. Then I'm going to go back on this layer and select the ones spawning rubble. Okay, so what you want to do is set the um, Z axis to 10, uh, a random direction here, and some angular velocity. Then you want to press H to hide that one and find another one then the same about around 10 then maybe 3 and some angular velocity and hide that next one um, maybe 15 no that's a bit much I'll try 9 
some of that, some of that, some of that. That should work fine. Once you've given them all some velocity, then we can press Alt H to unhide them, and then press P, and there we go. We have spinning rubble, which looks quite cool. So now, if we go back to layer one and press Shift A, add a plane S, and move it down a little bit, and then we press go to camera view, press P and A which is in this layer for some weird reason. Oh, with the rubble. So move that to layer one. That can be in the middle there. And so now if we go into texture view and press P and then A, we have a big flash and some smoke and rubble, which disappears up right now. So yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. This explosion you could probably even use for maybe mines or missiles or just any really type of explosion. One thing you might not like though is the amount of time the smoke is alive for. Or not really alive, just sort of not moving. So if we go into the smoke thing here, you might sort of think it hangs around the ground for a little bit too long. So you can just turn down this timer to maybe 40 and press there and P, and press A, and it starts rising a lot faster. I mean, you can probably turn that, you can turn it completely off if you want to. But, yeah, just depends what you sort of like, sort of look you want to be going for. That could work, but, yeah, again, up to you. I'll hopefully be soon posting another tutorial showing you guys how to get the, uh, sort of C4 working itself, getting it to stick to walls, and getting a um, arm rig for the player to throw it out, which will be pretty fun. But uh, yeah, that's how you guys can do the main explosion. That's the end of the tutorial, guys. Leave a like if you found it helpful. Uh, leave a comment if you found something wrong with it, or something's not working. I'll gladly help you guys out. But yeah, until then, I'll see you guys next time.